Hello dear friends, I'm so excited today to be able to show you a really really simple technique for getting a different effect on fabric and this is called a petite crackle effect and we do this using a flour and water mixture so what you will need is just some flour, I had self-raising flour but it doesn't have to be that, it could just be regular flour I wouldn't maybe use bread flour, I haven't tried that before but self-raising a normal flour now works <coughs> you're going to need a little bit of water for mixing it and then you want to mix together flour and water so that you've got this sloppy mixture don't worry about the lumps it's not going to affect your design if you did worry about the lumps you could always pop this into your blender to mix up but you want it to be fairly goopy then I have two pieces of fabric and this is cotton or calico and it's been pre-washed I'm going to do two different things with this I'm going to trace around the leaves well this is a bay leaf that I have dried I'm going to just trace around this bay leaf using a pencil and not going too hard because I don't want the line to actually remain as part of my design and I'm just going to do a couple of these randomly um, I won't be making these designs up into anything particular at this particular point but you could actually cut your fabric to suit the front of a bag or you could make a book cover it's entirely up to you um now let's just do two three i'll just do two so i'm going to repeat the design on this piece of fabric because as i said i want to show you two different ways of of doing this you could use a stencil as a design you could print a design off the internet um, and just if you've got a design that shows up really nicely with like a thick black line for instance like a little heart like that you'll be able to see that outline and trace it really easily so let's go all the way around here like that so for my first design I'm going to take a smallish soft paint brush and I'm going to paint the inside of the leaf because when I come to do the crackle the inside of the leaf is going to pick up the crackle effect a bit like a vein on a leaf possibly and you're wanting to follow the contour of your design and make sure that you've got a good outline so that you want it nice and smooth and strong so that the design doesn't have big raggedy edges <clears throat> what you will probably notice as this starts to dry is that the water content um, of this mixture that we've made will start to almost create a little bleed effect um, on the side of your design. Don't worry about that because it's only water. And then as the flour and water resist starts to dry, it does go slightly yellowy. Now one is often tempted to just put on a heat tool or use your hair dryer just to accelerate the drying time. But for this I have found that that isn't always the best. So just leave it to dry naturally. The next thing that's going to happen is that you're going to find that your fabric is going to sort of wrinkle and curl a bit where the design has been painted with this flour and water resist. Don't worry, that's not permanent and it will remedy itself once we've started to paint the design. So these two designs I'm doing, I'm painting the inside of the leaf. You want to make sure that you don't have any dry spots so you can really see that the flour and water is reflecting the light and the fabric that hasn't got the flour and water is quite dry and it looks matte make sure you cover all those areas otherwise if I had a stripe like that I would just get a stripe of paint once I come to do my background right. it will be a thick mixture and it is going to be goopy and maybe it will bother some of you but just go with the flow because it really is a fun technique make sure before you leave it to dry that it's all settled and I haven't taped this down onto a board because the fabric when you're painting these big areas will start to stretch a little bit as it gets wet and it will just shrink back once it starts to dry so when I come to do the second design you'll see what I mean and it's really difficult to to tape that design without also picking up the marks of the tape I have done other videos with this particular technique and I'll link some of those up here below up here below I'll, I'll link them above sorry 
so that you can actually have a look at them if you want to see some of the other ideas. The Zimbabwean woman did quite a lot of this um, technique. They used to lay out tablecloths. That was one of the touristy crafts that they did. It was made these beautiful, beautiful tablecloths with sun paints, which are light sensitive paints and they almost, for want of a better description, bleach designs into the paint. So they would put paint on fabric, put maybe leaves on it like ferns, and then as it dries, it will leave the impression of the fern underneath. But backgrounds they did with this kind of technique and there was a school nearby and they'd actually just laid them out on the tennis court to get them dry quickly. There we go. So that's design number one where we've done the inside of the leaf. Okay, now I'm going to move over to the other design and I'm going to paint the background. So I'm going to first of all use the small brush just to outline the shape of my leaf and I want to be fairly accurate with that so that I don't get a funny shaped leaf. Okay, so I'm just going to do that and then also when I come in with a big brush it'll make it easier getting up close to the design. This area between the two leaves is fairly small so I might as well just paint that in while I'm here. And you'll see that it is a different consistency to paint, it's goopy, <laughs> but um, it does spread. And any lumps and bumps you have are going to have absolutely no effect on your design whatsoever. Just try and make your mixture spread evenly on the fabric. That will affect your drying time. Right, so I'm going all the way around the edge here. Around this side as well. You could use a chisel shaped brush to do this edging. That also works really well. But because of the thickness of the paint, I've opted for a softer brush just to be able to spread it without getting bristle marks. I'm just going to rotate my fabric now so that I can move this into a position which is easier for me to work on. And don't be afraid of doing that. If you're working on a large surface like a dining room table, you've got plenty of space, make yourself comfortable. Don't always fight against trying to get things and get your hands stuck into the flower and creates a big mess. So just following this outline again, the next part will be really easy and quick. There we go. Move some of those lumps away. Also by rotating things you'll see if you've missed a spot on the opposite side because you'll be looking at it from a different angle. I can't believe it, I had really quite bad bronchitis a little while ago and I can hear when I'm talking my voice still sounds a bit raspy, very weird, but it was, a, it was an awful one. So I'm going to swap that brush and I'm going to now go for a really big fat brush. I'm going to just use my fingers to hold the one side and I'm going to be brushing from the center outwards, pulling the fabric towards me. And I'm going to cover my whole surface background with this. So the one side we've painted the design, the other side we're doing the background. Oopsie. I'll get this onto a smoother part. I'm just painting on an opened up Amazon envelope and I do find them quite useful because I will need this workspace again shortly and then I'm able to move this out of the way so that I can actually carry on with other things. Right, if you paint, it from, paint from the center outwards it really does make it so much easier. Make sure that you've got enough mixture on here so that you'll have something that you can crack. If you do put the mixture on very, very thinly or your mixture is too um, runny so that it's just like milk, then you're not going to get much of an effect when it comes to it. Watch out for any little dry spots so that you can fill those in. Remove any threads like that if you see them in time. There we go. So this will probably take a good couple of hours to dry, depending on what the weather's doing where you live. If it's really, really hot, maybe not that long. Don't maybe put it out in the sunshine if you've got wind because if the wind flips it over you might find you get flour and water 
resist on the design but certainly you can put it where there is air circulating so that it will dry a little bit quicker right, brush all the way to the edges you never know you might if you're stitching something you might not always stitch as straight as you think you do so I find it's much easier just to put the painted area fill it with color and then you know that you're safe Right, carefully putting a finger with no flower on it into the middle just to support my fabric while I'm painting. And you can already see as it's starting to dry, it's getting a little bit of that yellowish tinge. The water's starting to evaporate. So it's thick and goopy. It's fairly evenly spread, making sure that I've got no really big thick parts and then I'm just going to leave this to dry oh okay if that happens and you do what I've just done is drop a piece in the middle of your design <clears throat> scoop it up with something that's dry like a little sucker stick or the back of a paintbrush and then just wet it so that you rinse out that flour not saturated but just maybe take a cotton bud or something and then you won't have any problems and I'll show you quickly what to do with that let me just get this all done here. Have I pulled myself out of frame? That's an easy thing to do. Right, so my design is now completely covered the background where you put your fingers to support the fabric. You will need to go over that just to make sure that you've got flower and water resist because it's easy to pull that off with your thumb. Right, so let's correct this little mistake we've got here. I'm just going to grab a cotton bud or two. So with the first cotton bud, I'm just going to quietly lift as much of this off as possible. Like that. And then with the second one, I'm just going to dip this in water and try and wash. Oopsie, I've now lost this in the jug. Try and rinse some of this out. And because I'm not actually working up against the actual flower and water resist, it's fine. I'll leave that to dry and if I've got any problems, I'll just rinse that out a little bit more before I actually start painting the colour. That I would be able to do with a hairdryer. Good that you see what happens when things go wrong. They go wrong with me as well. Anyway, I'll see you once this is dry to show you the next step. I have allowed my fabric to now dry for a couple of hours and you'll see it's gone quite light and that the fabric is starting to feel a bit like stiff old parchment and if you have a look on the back you'll see that there are lots of little wrinkles and things which is a good sign um, once we start painting on this you're going to see that it will start to flatten out but to begin with I'm going to start off just with this leaf design you'll notice on here it's not quite as wrinkled as this one because it's a smaller area but in order to make sure that I have little cracks or veins where the paint can penetrate I'm going to take this in my hand and I'm just gently going to crunch it up a little bit and you can hear it crunching as you work and move your hand around a little bit so that you have little cracks in different directions you'll see the little cracks here that I'm talking about you want them in all sorts of different directions you don't just want um, in one right so for this I'm going to start off by using a soft bristled brush just so that I can do the outline of the design and I'm using transparent fabric paint um, it's not the same as craft paint it is a fabric paint it's designed for painting on fabric and you iron it on the wrong side once you've actually allowed your fabric paints to dry so it's going to sit on top of the um, flower and water resist and the color that you see here as being quite a strong green is not going to be what we get as a result we're going to just have little veins of color showing through so it's going to be largely creamy white underneath with little veins of green going through it's going to be very pretty but it's hard to see when you've not done this before so just making sure that you get a nice outline using the soft brush because it applies the paint quickly and evenly move it around if necessary if it's not too big a piece of fabric that you're working on and then once I have 
got the color on I'm going to move and use a stippling brush which is a round brush that has flat edges ones that you use when you're doing stenciling and I'm going to really work the paint into the little vein so I'm actually going to be pushing down on it now you don't want to work with dye when you're using flour and water resist because dye will just dilute the flour and water and then you're just going to end up having no veins at all you want to actually work with fabric paints and don't have a wet brush have a dry brush so this is a stencil brush and I'm just going to use this in circular motions and look how nice that looks you can really see that little veins popping through here as I'm pushing the color in not going to worry about getting too close to the edge because I don't want to lose my outline but you can actually see there very nicely where the little veins are and just work through now you can also flip over and you can see that the paint is starting to penetrate through to the fabric below and that's what we're going to see those little veins otherwise everything else is going to be a plain color once the paint has dried you would be able then to come in do some stitching you could quilt around it you could outline it with different colors you could do whatever you like but for today I'm just going to be doing this part because this is the technique I'm showing you um, I have done the other panel where I've got the plain leaves and then I'll be coloring the background so if you've got two panels like this it would be really nice to make it into a little bag or a pillow of some sort I think my granddaughter is going to claim some of these right so having seen now that the flour and water is quite stiff and almost parchmenty like when it's dried you're going to notice that as I start painting it flattens out and that's because it becomes moist again then the next thing you'll notice that is once the color has penetrated the little veins that we're going to need to set the color into the fabric before we actually start to remove the flour and water resist so all the color that's sitting on the surface that's lying on top of the flour and water resist is going to wash out and we're going to do that just by using some cold water but to set the paint this particular paint requires that we actually just iron it with a hot dry iron so put a piece of clean white copy paper or clean piece of parchment paper on your ironing board put the painted side face downwards on to the paper and then with a hot dry iron you're going to just iron for two three two to three minutes just to fix the color and then we will actually remove the paint by rinsing this in some cold water just want to work on my outline here a little bit you can always come in afterwards with a bit more paint once you've taken the flour and water out and really play around right so like we did with the first one I'm going to come in with my stenciling brush and just using a circling motion I'm going to push that paint down into those little veins so that it can go through and reach the fabric underneath try not to overwork it if you can because then you might stand the chance of just diluting the flour and water but you should start to see that coming through that is coming through there yep so we're going to just leave that to dry and then we will come back to it now with the other one um, let me swap over it's easier to work on my right hand side I'm again going to just take this piece of fabric and I'm going to crunch it up and this one because it's got more on it you can really hear it crunching make sure that you crunch it two or three times so that the, all the crackles are in different directions and then lay it flat I'm again going to go in with my little round brush and I'm going to paint around the outside of the area that I haven't put the flour and water in so we've got a positive shape which is the solid color that we've done on the previous on the left hand side and this white one will be what is known as a negative shape because it's going to have no color you can come in again as with as I said with stitching and things afterwards paint and just neaten up these edges it's really fun to see the two different contrasts when we take the flour and water resist out it's actually quite magical especially if you have never done it before and you just can't visualize what's going to happen it's really I don't know it's one of those lovely moments we think oh wow 
So we used to use this a lot for fabric painting in South Africa to do borders because it was nice and quick and easy to do. And if you had done a painted tablecloth, which we did a lot of in South Africa, um, I think because we eat outside and have lots of barbecues and things, um, it was great for outdoor living. So we painted lots of tablecloths with lovely bright colours, sat out in that gorgeous sunshine, and um, this was a very nice easy background to do instead of having to laboriously paint a solid colour. I have done a few other videos on this particular method and I'll link the playlist in the um, description box so that if you're interested in seeing some of the other examples um, you can go and watch those. And there are different mediums that you can actually use for doing this resist. I think I've mentioned that you can use batik wax um, and that would allow you to use a dye but you can also do it with corn flour and water and um, yeah certainly play with a lot of things. Right so I've got a fairly decent outline there. Now I'm going to go for my big brush and I'm just going to really brush this well and truly into the fabric spreading as quickly as possible and then I'll come in with my stippling brush to work it in a little bit more. Trying to cover all the areas that look white because you just don't know whether there's any little cracks underneath that. And for this as I said I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on my brush to get the colour to penetrate. I think with these bigger pieces like this, you're able to see more easily where the little veins are. There we go. And because it's a small piece of fabric and it's easier just to turn it around, please do that because otherwise it's quite difficult working across your body. but yeah here we go so I've got a whole lot of random brush strokes here which are going to be nothing when you come to lift the flour and water out you don't need to worry about that it's just a question of getting the color on and then rubbing it in through those little cracks if you can't find transparent fabric paints then you can certainly go to a screen printing supplier and ask them to give you some clear or transparent fabric um, screen printing base they normally sell it in like a litre or 500 moles and just some pigment and then you can mix up your own colours if you're doing large areas. That's what we used to do in South Africa was just buy base and mix up our own colours. My shop that I had, an art and craft shop, um, we used to mix up I think it was about 120 different colours of fabric paint and they were just glorious to look at on the shelf. I loved it. Right, so I'm going to go in with my stippling brush. I'm going to start in the middle here and just rubbing all of this paint in through those little veins. Pushing it in, making sure that if there's areas of the fabric where I have missed with paint that I'm covering that. And it does look a bit messy at this stage. And I know some of you will be alarmed, but don't fear. This is not the end result. Right, rotating this again just so it's easy to work with um, and rubbing it in. So this will probably take about an hour to dry. It's late evening now here and um, it's quite a lot cooler. So about an hour to dry or you could just leave it overnight and come back the next day and just rinse out the flour and water after you have done the heat sealing of the fabric paint. Still feels very parchmenty, but you can certainly see those little cracks. And if we turn this over, you will start to see how the paint is penetrating through the fabric. So it's looking good so far. 
just going to go over it once more. Especially around these areas here. Right, so this is going to dry. I will show you what it looks like when it's dry and then we will come back once we've rinsed it off. But it is looking good so far. Here we have it. The fabric paints have dried and uh, I actually left them overnight just simply because I was busy doing other things. So you can see here that you've got nice little crackles in the actual flower and water resist. And if we turn that over, you will see you've got a bit of colouring on that side. So that's more or less what you're going to see, that gentle colouring. On this area where we've done this big surface, you'll see that the colour is quite strong. And just remember that this colour is all going to wash out. What you're going to be left with is more like this kind of colour on the other side. I did something a little bit different with this one, as I actually, in some areas, just added a little bit of extra water, why you, which is why you've got that lighter colour. Um, I just wanted to see how I could play with that. So I've got these two different designs. One is where I've co coloured the actual design with the resist, and the second one where I've just painted the resist onto the background. So you'll see the contrast. Could make a nice little bag or a cushion. Best thing to do now is to put some paper over the front of your designs, iron them with a hot dry iron for two to three minutes, and then just put this in a bowl of cold water just to soak off the flour and water resist, which does come off fairly easily and then leave it to dry. And once I've done all of that, I'll be back to show you the results. Well, I've rinsed out the flour and water, and I'm really pleased with how these results have turned out. This was the first one that we did, where we actually painted the resist onto the leaf shape. And remember, I used just a plain little bay leaf just to trace the design around. Um, and then I applied the crackle and let it dry, and then I cracked it and put fabric paint over it. Um, and I'm very happy the way that that's turned out. I think if you were doing this for a mixed media project or you were doing quilting or embroidery, this would give you a lovely surface on which you could actually work. So that's the first one. The second one was that we did the reverse of that, so that we, that we worked as a positive shape where we put the resist, and this we worked with the leaf as a negative shape. So we traced around the leaf again and we put the flower and resist all over the background and I just love the way we've got this lovely delicate marks that have formed on the background. I did mention to you in the video that I applied a little bit of water to some of the paint. I was just curious to see what happened and I quite like that sort of softer colour that's come through although I would caution you don't do it on everything because otherwise you can actually just dilute your resist completely and you won't get that nice effect. But look at these lovely markings along here how beautiful they are and they're delicate. So certainly really a nice sort of background that you could actually work on. I have also here some um, skeletonized leaves and I'm sure most of you are familiar with those. These are just leaves where they've actually taken the uh, fleshy part off and you've got an imprint. But you could actually use those to delicately print on there if you wanted the veins of the leaves to show up. Or you could do some stitching of some sort or you could use it and just as a canvas where you could write words in here. There's loads and loads of possibilities. So I hope that this has given you some inspiration just to go and get started. The ingredients are in your kitchen. It's really easy to do. It's a lovely way to use up scraps of fabric like an old sheet or a um, piece of you know cotton that you might have lying around like a pillowcase. And just have some fun. Thank you for joining me. If you've enjoyed this content, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Bye for now.